If you or a loved one has crashed a Honda Pilot in central Minnesota uh, around November to December, I'd like to personally thank you because those parts from that crashed Pilot uh, are the parts that I harvested to fix my Pilot. So thank you for that. Uh, the Pilot is fully operational, fully driving, got an alignment, new tires, drives great. But here is the process of how it got there. So uh, let's get into it. My AC condenser was damaged in the accident and bent uh, inwards. So here I am using two boards to sandwich it together and using a clamp up there as you can see to sandwich it together to straighten it out. It's not perfect by any means, but it's less of a, the letter C than it used to be. gotten far along to where right here I am removing the broken fender underliner and the fender is getting switched out to one that I took at the junkyard. Using some spray paint here to cover up where I was welding just so it doesn't rust in the future. It's 20 degrees outside, so this spray paint had started freezing up. I tried heating it up, tried cleaning out the nozzle, but I ended up throwing the can away because it didn't work. It took a few tries messing with the gaps just because the door would hit the fender so I had to adjust it a few millimeters at a time, undo one bolt, redo another one just so I made sure that the door didn't scratch the fender. The fender underliner that I bought at the junkyard had been cracked so I'm just drilling a few holes and using zip ties as a stitch to hold it together.
This is the under tray that lives right underneath the radiator. Uh, in the accident, it was cracked really badly and I could not find this tray at any of the junkyards. So I just drilled a few holes, used some zip ties and stitched it back together with no problems. This used radiator support had a lot of rust in every single fastener, so I'm just using a tap and some uh, WD-40 to clean out the threads before I break any bolts in it. to clean all the bolts I removed from the car so far. They were super rusty and I'm just waiting for the radiator. So I'm just killing time, but this is very vital to do so you don't snap bolts. swapping out the sensor between the old and the new radiator. I wanted to reuse one of the bolts that was stuck in the old radiator, but no amount of beating and breaking would get that bolt out. I had previously removed the radiator support first before I had removed the radiator.
filling up the brand new radiator with coolant for the very first time. It's always an exciting process. Junkyard grill had two of these connectors broken so I'm mixing up some bumper repair epoxy to put the clips back where they belong and this stuff I've had for about a year or two the epoxy so it didn't exactly want to come out but in the end got it epoxied and it is still holding. The same bumper that the grill was attached to had this pretty big dent into it, uh, being plastic bumper. I took a heat gun to both sides and with the, the hammer I was able to push that dent out, but there's a crack right where the right where the dent was, so I'm seeing if I can kind of warm it up enough to stay in there. That wasn't the case, uh, I ended up just JB welding the other side so the bumper would hold together where that crack is because I didn't want to put zip ties in such a visible place. Passenger side door mirror had bent a little bit from the impact and I took it off a few times, realized the gasket was a little bit torn, uh, super glued it back on, stuck the mirror on, um, it was still sticking out. I tried using a heat gun to bend it back into place, that didn't work. I ended up just using some uh, 3M tape for the molding and taping it to the door. Uh, that has now since come off, but it was a uh, it was a nice try for that. Here I am uh, redoing the wiring for the fog lights. It had torn off quite a bit and I'm just using a soldering iron and some wire to extend it out to where it should be in preparation for the new fog lights.
decided that I wanted OEM like fog lights, so I bought some Chinese knockoffs since they don't make the OEM ones anymore. I uh, had to use the original Honda instructions. Drilled holes in the bumper, uh, ended up cutting out the piece, uh, and then most of the way through the installation realized that hey, they don't fit right because the Chinese must have used the wrong model. fog lights are the worst $49.99 that I paid for them uh, they just don't fit there's huge gaps the brackets had to get bent the adjusters still don't work and the plastic trim doesn't fit but hey I got OEM ish looking fog lights yay My license plate had got bent in the accident, so I'm using my favorite tool, the 2x4, to straighten out the license plate to make sure it's legal and legible. Finally made it to the step where I can fill up the remaining coolant, put the battery back in, and get ready for startup and burping of the coolant. I had retrofitted my original lights and one of which was damaged in the accident so here I am opening up my used uh, donor headlight that I got at the junkyard to put projectors in so it's uniform and so I can see when I drive in the dark.
it's time to put the headlight on, put the bumper, the grill, everything else on so the car is aesthetically almost done. One thing that usually happens when you're trying to rush things is you'll put a bolt in crooked, think it's straight, screw it in, and then realize, hey, I just now have bent threads, so the tap and die has to come out to fix the mistake that if you had taken three more seconds to make sure everything was in right, you wouldn't be in this position right now. I'll coat a spray paint on the hood to make sure that the welds on the hood do not rust. You can't just put in nice projectors and then leave the headlights super hazy to where you can't even see if there's projectors in there. You gotta wet sand, buff them out so you can show the world your nice fancy projectors. I was sanding the headlight first with 1500 grit, then I went up to 2000 grit. This is all wet sand, warm water, dish soap, and uh, grab the buffer, buff it out with some uh, plastic compound, and clean it up. At this point, I had taken in the car to Honda to put on new tires to get in alignment, and while there, on one of their inspections, they noted that the valve covers were leaking really, really bad to the point that it was smoking. So uh, they quoted me 500 bucks to fix it. I went to O'Reilly's, bought myself a new valve cover set for $70, and um, this is the night before I went back for a second alignment because something wasn't right. Uh, turns out plug tube number five and number six, uh, the tube seals were completely broke and both valve covers were leaking really bad. While at the beautiful dealership, I was also told that the clamp on the lower radiator hose was not holding and I was leaking coolant everywhere. So after this, I had taken off the heat sheet or the uh, undercover shield. I had drained all the coolant, taken off the clamp, put on one of those uh, screwdriver clamps that you use to clamp them down and we are leaking coolant no more. Thanks Honda. If you made it this far and can hear my voice, thank you very much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for part three, just the gallery of everything being done. There's no more work needed and it works flawlessly.